Greatest Cards of All Time podcast number 24. Let's take a nice close look at some Brewers dominating pitchers of our time. Some on-card autos to go with these beautiful 2021 Topps Allen and Ginter cards. These are certified autograph issued cards. Gold frame on-card mini cards. I like these. Josh Hader and Devin Williams. What do you think about these cards? These are your cards, actually. Right. So I just picked these up at the LCS, which was actually the first time we were there. Unfortunately, we do not have a card shop that's super close. We have one that's probably 30 to 40 minutes away. It's okay. Um, but there were a couple options that were more like 45, 55 minutes away that were actually pretty solid. And I picked both of these cards up at the same shop. Um, this is, like you said, 2021. So this came out after probably, you could argue this, these two were the most dominant. Uh, I was, I would say one, two punch, but it's probably more like almost two, three punch because you would have your starter and then you would have Devin come out and then you would have Josh come out. So I wouldn't say one, two in, in 2020, which by the way, was Devin Williams rookie of the year. These two pitchers were the most dominant or arguably the most dominant. Almost in, a in guaranteed setup and a close. Almost right. a guaranteed save. Whatever you want to call it nowadays. I know the statistics are always changing the names. Whatever you want to call it. A hold, a save. These guys were bringing it in and consistently to the point where you could almost count on them. Well, like you said, so like what do you call it? Or I should say, you know, how different was this how different of a situation was Devin Williams who ends up winning the rookie of the year in 2020 that's the first time a pitcher has ever won the rookie of the year without either starting a game or recording a save so that is just how unique of a situation it was for an eighth inning pitcher to end up winning the rookie of the year it's just never happened before where you've had such a specialized pitcher in the eighth inning slot like that is kind of a new thing we've already seen this where the role of a starting pitcher has significantly changed from back in the early 1900s you know they would have complete games they didn't have pitch counts it was completely different now you have way more specialized pitchers coming in and I don't even know how to evaluate people like that for the Hall of Fame because now we're talking about completely a completely different thing where somebody's only pitching one inning typically in a game that they're pitching so just to expand a little bit more on, on Devin Williams though in his rookie of the year and how unique it was he ended up actually striking out 53 percent of the batters that he faced that's the highest percent out of any pitcher that's a major league record for anybody that has actually pitched 20 innings or more so he ended up pitching 27 innings it wasn't a lot of innings. This was a shortened season. He actually only played in 22 games in that rookie of the uh, rookie of the year season of 2022. His ERA was 33, which is insane. So that basically means in the 27 innings that he pitched, he gave up one run. I mean, absolutely insane. Just a total dominant season. And then to follow that up, you have Josh Hader coming in for the ninth inning. What, right? What, what do you have to say? I call these two the Brew City Fastballers because they would come in and you know that nobody could catch up with their heat, especially by the time you've well, gone well, through the well, lineup well, back up, for the back third it up, time. Back it up. Devin was known for his changeup. So yeah, Josh Hader definitely was known for his fastball. Yeah. He actually has some crazy stat where like uh, a crazy percentage of his pitches are like 98 miles per hour or higher. But not Devin. Devin was known for his changeup. So he was not coming in with heat. He was coming in with something completely different. He's a great and compliment rate, to the yeah, Josh August. Hader. Yes, it's definitely different. Um, yeah, so do you have anything else to say about Hader or the cards in general? 
Oh, absolutely. It's a great way to present these two cards, and it adds a great value to have them both within the same collection, don't you think? Yeah, you I... have them side by side, okay, all of a sudden now they've gained some value, I think, in my opinion. A couple things about the cards and just, you know, the 2021 Allen and Ginter. 2020 was, like I said, that this is the, the year before this, was the dominant season so it's kind of cool to have that you obviously can't have the 2020 cards until the next year so this kind of commemorates the best eighth nine pitchers in maybe major league baseball history so i think that's cool as far as the cards themselves i'm not typically an allen and ginter fan but yes you are <laughs> these mini cards at least have a gold border to make them a regular size card. I do enjoy the gold border. Yep, that I don't I don't really like the mini cards. If these were just mini cards, I would like them less. One thing I do not like about it is that it seems like the mini cards are actually just free floating inside this gold border. So yeah, there's a seal over the top so they can't like fall out of the border, but they're not like centered inside the gold border i could knock it over to the right or the left and up i don't like that uh some things i do like though about the cards i do like the blue autograph they look sharp the blue auto is insane they look really sharp and they i don't know really if you nice. noticed this is the old logo for the brewers which which is now the new logo which is now they I brought think, it back the new old right i like that they actually have the mb mitt the Harvey's Wall Bangers MB Mitts. All right, so I just want to talk a little bit more about the Josh Hader card, or I guess more so his career with the Brewers, because this is such a unique position where you're a closer. Um, there have been closers now over the years, but we can't go back, you know, a hundred years and look at what did prior closers do. So, you know, what do they have to accomplish in order to make the Hall of Fame? And I'm not saying haters a Hall of Famer. I'm just asking the question because as a closer, you're not going to have as many opportunities to impact the game. I mean, obviously, it's a very important aspect of the game. You're coming in with the lead in the ninth inning to close out the game. Mariano but, Rivera. Mariano Rivera. Okay, that's a good that's a good question. What is his career war? Guess what? It is lower than Wes Farrell. So Wes Farrell's not in the Hall of Fame. His career war is 60-something, and Mariano Rivera, the best closer in baseball, has a war of 57.1. Now, I understand you have to make adjustments because he was a closer, and again, to my point, is you only have so much of an impact because you're only typically pitching one inning. Is Trevor Hoffman a Hall of Famer right Trevor now? Trevor Hoffman is not. I don't think he is currently a Hall of fa Famer, no. Should he be a Hall of yeah, Famer? Yeah, he, he was. I think he's number two. Okay. on the list for for career saves so he was yeah. number one until mariano rivera passed him i want to say that so i'm pretty sure he'll end up being in there but again his career war is not all that high either and it, and it goes to just the fact that they just don't pitch all that much you know they pitch typically yeah. one inning and that's it so I get less playing time so what I wanted to do, you know, I looked at Mariano Rivera and I looked at some other closers and I was just trying to look, all right, so what are the best closers, let's say the top 10 closers, what have they done typically? What type of a war would they produce in a typical year? What did Josh Hader do? So, you know, looking at Josh, he's a three-time All-Star. He played from 2017 to, you know, currently through 2022. Um... His, his war at this point is 12, which is pretty solid. But what I wanted to do was just look at seasons where he actually played in 55 or more games because we had the shortened season in 2020. Very, you know, when you're already a limited impact player because you only typically pitch one inning a game, when you're now playing very few games, your, your war is going to be very low at that point. Think about the impact while comparing um, season statistics, too. Right. When you forget about that, not everybody knows how many games were played in each individual right. season, especially in these, you know, COVID-shortened COVID years. Mm -hmm. And 
any other time there was a lockout or a shortened season for any sort you of reason. You may be able to compensate for like a batting average and higher, have a higher batting average than yeah. usual, but obviously your home run numbers are going to be lower and your RBI are going to be lower and all those And nobody wants to sit down and, and do like math that, yeah. either, so. Well, so anyway, so just going back to the war and looking at, I just looked at three years for Hayter that he had 55 or more games that he actually pitched in. These are his best three years? Well, these were actually his only three years where he pitched in 55 or more games because his first year was less, because 2020 was less because of the shortened season. He's only been in the league for like five years anyway, yeah. so he hasn't had that many, you know, the opportunity has been fairly limited. So I just kind of wanted to look at a normal season. You're playing the entire time, which is about, you know, he's going to get in 55 games here we go. Plus. 55 game qualifier. That's what my I, qualifier. So then here? I want to look at his average war. Okay. So his average war was 2.75 or 2.76, I, you know, rounding up, rounding down. So then I wanted, like I said, I looked at some of the potential Hall of Famers that were your typical closer and closer only role. So you can't go to old pitchers. You have to go to pitchers that were probably in the mid 90s and going forward. To compare? To compare, just because the roles changed at that time where you had more specific closers that would come in for right. an inning or two. Yeah. So I mentioned Billy Wagner to you, and you didn't know who he was. And honestly, Not I really. don't really remember him all that much. But he was basically supposedly one of the best left-handed closers ever. Josh Hader, by the way, throws lefty, signs autographs righty. Weird stat that I know reading an article. Throws lefty, signs, signs me autographs out a little right. bit. It kind of creeps yep, me out. That's different. But so just Billy Wagner going back to him. He played from 1995 to 2010. He was a seven time All Star. His career war is 27.7. And I, I wanted to use the same qualifier for him because, again, when you pitch in a very limited number of games or innings, an injury changes things significantly for a closer. The rookie year may change things significantly because they come in halfway through the season. So as a closer that typically only pitches one inning a game, I wanted to make sure we had a decent sample size of number of games to see what their war would be. Because again, if you only end up pitching in 10 or 15 games because you're injured for half the year or three quarters of the year, there's no way you can have a significant war with such limited pitching. So I got 10 years from Billy Wagner. Now, he's not a Hall of Famer, um, but he's still sixth all-time in career saves. Uh, as far as lefties, he's number two. And John Franco or Franco, I'm not exactly sure how to say his name. He's number five. He's also a, a lefty. He's got 424 saves. Potato, potato. It's very close. So just looking at the 10 years, he averaged uh, 2.44 war over those 10 years where he pitched in 55 games or more. So Josh Hader is actually above that pace at this point. He's only pitched three years where he's had that many games that he's played in. However, he's on pace to possibly be one of the best closers ever. I mean, what do you think about that? Is it too soon to say somebody might be the best ever when they've played five years? They're a three-time All-Star. They're on pace. They're averaging you know, well above average for your typical all-star. They're going to be in the category of possibly the top five all-time closers if he maintains this level throughout the rest of his, you know, years. Now, that's a lot to ask for. But what do you, what do you think about that? What do you think about Hayter as a player, all-star, potential Hall of Famer? What do you have to say about that? I think his pedigree and his history so far lines him up in that direction to be one of the best. Obviously, he's been one of the best right now. And what do you need to see from him? Uh, two years, three years of this consistent play? Like, what else do you need to see? I was calling Luis Robert a Hall of Famer as soon as I saw how athletic he was and how he approached the game and how he could throw and his batting stance, everything. You could just tell him like, wow, this is like watching Deion Sanders again out there strapping him up and 
you know, he had the speed, he had the consistency on offense and defense. I love this guy. Doesn't take much to figure out uh, somebody special. Josh Hader, super special. And I love these blue autographs on these yeah. cards, yeah. too. So going back to the card again, yeah, the blue looks nice on that. Um, you know, the Brewers, a lot of their colors are blue. So that's that's a nice touch with just being the Brewers' color. A nice match. Yeah, and the cards, you know, I, I, I like some aspects of it. Um, it's not a picture, right? Or, you know, you would say that's that's an, that's an a painting. It's an oil or, painting, much like all of Allen and Ginter. I mean, if those are paintings, they're spot on. I mean, I really, those are paintings, right? They're not just like a Super picture good. that they try to make it look like it's a painting. It might by changing. be a picture where they... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it might just... be a photograph where they make it look like a yeah. painting, but uh, I'd like to believe it's a real painting. And it's definitely an on-card autograph. What more could you want on that on the white background? The blue looks fantastic. Both of these. 